of the Wishing Chair by Enid Blyton Read by Sarah Ovens One The Strange Old Shop the adventures really began on the day that Molly and Peter went out to spend three shillings on a present for their mother's birthday. They emptied the money out of their money box and counted it. Three, said Peter. Good. Now, what shall we buy mother? Mother loves old things, said Molly. If we could find an old shop somewhere full of old things, you know, Funny spoons, quaint vases, old glasses and beads. Something of that sort would be lovely for Mother. She would love an old tea caddy to keep the tea in, I'm sure. Or perhaps an old, old vase. All right, said Peter. We'll go and find one of those shops this very day. Put on your hat and come on, Molly. Off they went and ran into the town. It's a shop with the word antiques over it that we want, said Peter. Antiques means old things. Just look out for that, Molly. But there seemed to be no shop with the word antiques printed over it at all. The children left the main street and went down a little turning. There were more shops there, but still not the one they wanted. So on they went and came to a small, narrow street whose houses were so close that there was hardly any light in the road. And there, tucked away in the middle, was the shop with antiques printed on a label inside the dirty window. Good, said Peter. Here is a shop that sells old things. Look, Molly, do you see that strange little vase with swans set all round it? I'm sure Mother would like that. It is marked two shillings. We could buy that and some flowers to put in it. We could buy that and some flowers to put in it. So into the old dark shop they went. It was so dark that the children stumbled over some piled up rugs on the floor. Nobody seemed to be about. Peter went to the counter and rapped on it. A tiny door at the back opened and out came the strangest little man, no higher than the countertop. He had pointed ears like a pixie. The children stared at him in surprise. He looked very cross and spoke sharply. What do you want making a noise like that? We want to buy the vase with swans round it, said Peter. Muttering and grumbling to himself, the little chap picked up the vase and pushed it across the counter. Peter put down the money. Can I have some paper to wrap the vase in? He asked politely. You see, it's for my mother's birthday and I don't want her to see me carrying it home. Grumbling away to himself, the little man went to a pile of boxes at the back of the shop and began to open one to look for a piece of paper. The children watched. To their enormous surprise, a large black cat with golden eyes jumped out of the box and began to spit and snarl at the little man. He smacked it and put it back again. He opened another box. Out of that came a great wreath of green smoke that wound about the shop and smelt strange. The little man caught hold of it as if it were a ribbon and tried to stuff it back into the box again. But it broke off and went wandering away. How he stamped and raged. The children felt quite frightened. We'd better go without the paper, whispered Molly to Peter. But just then, another extraordinary thing happened. Out of the next box came a crowd of blue butterflies. They flew into the air and the little man shouted with rage again. He darted to 